Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Police are searching for suspects involved in a shooting that happened at a park near the San Antonio Missions. We have details on what police say happened. Joe Biden and California Senator Kamala Harris appearing for the first time together as running mates. I'm Inez de in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. It's already 80 degrees outside, yep. Heat is here, like Mike has been saying all day. He'll let you know how hot it'll get outside in just a bit. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is August 13th. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. You know, you want to just like walk outside and then just walk right back in. Yeah, it's called a U-turn and uh, a lot of <laughs> folks do it and that's okay. It is that time of year. Mike Osterhage is here and uh, Welcome yes, sir. back, by the way. Thank you very okay, much. You weren't up this early yesterday morning. I assume not. not uh, gosh, I hope not. No, you were Sarah. Does it seem a little more comfortable to you this morning than yesterday? No, oh, okay. No, I, I was thinking it, it felt more humid really today, but I don't know. Okay, I, I, it's just been crazy. And, and that's a matter of taste. But yesterday, can I go with Sarah? Okay. Okay. <laughs> it just I, maybe it's my imagination that very well could be. But uh, number wise, I mean, we're still up there. Heat index is at 84 right now. That's what it feels like in Gonzales, uh, 70s, upper 70s in portions of the hill country. And you can add about mm, anywhere 18, 20 degrees to these numbers. And that's what it's going to feel like later on this afternoon. Now, mold is on the low side. Same thing, pigweed and fall elm. Once again, we do have another heat advisory. This was just issued, goes into effect at one up until seven. And it's pretty much for the same area, about the northeastern third of our viewing area. It does include San Antonio, New Braunfels, all the way up the I-35 corridor, and then counties off to the east. So we're going to be seeing those heat index readings up around 105 to 110. At one point yesterday, we did hit at the airport 102, and at that time, the dew point temperature, measure of moisture that we always show, was 66. So the heat index at that point was about 108 here in town. So that's what we're going to be looking at at times. Now, CPS Energy also says, can you, or asks if you can lower your energy usage between 3 and 7 p.m. later on today. 92 at noon, 102. Yep, we hit it yesterday. We're going to hit it again today. And get used to that number. It looks like things are trending up just a little bit. So a few uh, records, I don't think today, but uh, we're going to be close to some records the next couple of days. Best news is I think the rain chances are looking more encouraging. We'll talk about that, not for a few days, but we'll talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your Thursday morning. All right, currently working on one accident right now. It's going to be a major accident on Wurzbach Road and the I-10 Axis Road right there on the 9600 block of I-10. Looks like this is still an ongoing uh, accident investigation there. We have a SAPD on scene and hopefully you can get cleared very quickly. However, if you are going northbound on Wurzbach, it is blocked off right there at the well, northbound Wurzbach Road and the access road of I-10. So keep that in mind if you're heading that way. Mark, Sarah. Thank you, Nick. New this morning, police searching for a man who broke into an apartment and tried to rob a person on the city's east side. Happened just after two this morning at the place apartments in the 3100 block of East Commerce. Police say a man broke into an apartment and tried to rob the victim. The homeowner was hit in the head with a hatchet. It was taken to Bamsey in serious condition. Officers say the suspect fled on the foot. The investigation is ongoing. Now to the latest this morning, police are searching for the people who shot a man in the leg on Mission Reach part of the Riverwalk last night. Police say it happened near Padre Park, which is not far from Mission San Jose. The 72 year old victim told officers he was on the paved trail when he was confronted by three to four suspects and was shot before the man's keys were taken. Then the suspects took off in the man's dark green SUV. The man was taken to the hospital and is expected to be okay. Now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic right here in Bear County. There are 291 new COVID-19 cases for a total of 43,455 since the pandemic began. The seven day average of new cases is now at 259 per day. There are also 26 new COVID-19 deaths, bringing the total to 545. In the city's daily briefing, Mayor Ron Nirenberg says 26 deaths be occurred between June 12th and yesterday. A total of 710 people are hospitalized, 309 in ICU, 213 on ventilators. We have 15% of staff hospital beds available. Sending kids back to in-person classes is not only a difficult decision for parents, but for grandparents taking care of their grandchildren. In Texas, more than 263,000 grandparents are responsible for their grandchildren under 18 years old. 
Mercedes Bristol has chosen to keep her grandchildren at home. She says during the COVID-19 pandemic, many grandparents are facing challenging situations. At our age, uh, you know, uh, we're very susceptible of, of any kind of virus. And, and so I don't know how the schools are going to manage the, 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 the virus at this point. For those children that have mental health illness and have challenges like ADHD and, and uh, um, you know, post-traumatic stress disorders, and, and they're already having a difficult time being home. And, and uh, so not sending up to school, grandparents are going to be very challenged with, with uh, homeschooling. Bristol is the executive director of the nonprofit Texas Grandparents Raising Grandchildren. After taking custody of her grandkids, Bristol created the organization based on her experience of not knowing who to connect with and where to get resources. She says some of the reason grandparents take care of their grandkids are because parents, the parents have died, they are incarcerated, or are not responsible to take care of the children. With less than three months until Election Day, the campaign kicking into full gear with former Vice President Joe Biden and Senator Kamala Harris coming out swinging at their first event together as running mates. Team President Donald Trump is hitting right back. ABC's Enos de la is in Washington with the latest. Senator Kamala Harris officially joining the Democratic ticket and jumping right in. The case against Donald Trump and Mike Pence is open and shut. Former Vice President Joe Biden and the California Senator appearing for their first time together as running mates, blasting President Trump's handling of the COVID-19 pandemic and current economic crisis. This is what happens when we elect a guy who just isn't up for the job. Our country ends up in tatters. Harris becoming the first black woman and first Asian American woman on the ticket of a major political party. You ready to go to work? Oh my God, I'm so ready to go to work. And that history making pick boosting fundraising. The pair helping raise $26 million in 24 hours. President Trump taking notice and hitting right back during an interview with Sinclair Broadcasting. She is a disaster. She's going to be a disaster, I think, for their party. But the Trump team is also sending mixed signals, calling the former prosecutor both too soft on crime and too tough. I don't want someone who says that they are not going to be tough on hardened criminals. She fought to keep inmates locked up in overcrowded prisons. Biden standing up for his new running mate. Donald Trump has already started his attacks, calling Kamala, quote, nasty, whining about how she is, quote, mean to his appointees. <laughs> it's no surprise because whining is what Donald Trump does best. And overnight, new details emerging about the Democrats' convention next week. The 13 candidates who ran against Biden in the primary will appear at a virtual event. In Esdell Equitera, ABC News, Washington. In your morning headlines, a fast-moving wildfire has shut down Interstate 70 in the state of Colorado. U.S. Forest Service says the Grizzly Creek fires jumped over the Colorado River. The fires burned more than 3,200 acres since Monday, and firefighters say there is zero containment. Some rural communities near Glenwood Springs are now under a pre-evacuation advisory. Crews off the coast of Mauritius are racing against time to pump the remaining oil out of a grounded Japanese cargo ship. Nearly 1,000 tons of oil have already leaked into a pristine Indian Ocean lagoon. The ship ran around two, ran aground two weeks ago. Now there are growing fears the vessel could split in half and release thousands more tons of oil into the lagoon. Stock spent Wednesday in the green, rebounding from Tuesday's losses. The run-up still wasn't enough for the S&P to break its all-time record. Even though the index gained 1.4 percent, it closed just five points below the high set back in February. NASDAQ picked up more than 2 percent, and the Dow gained slightly more than one percentage point. It's 439 and 80 degrees. World Health Organization advising everyone to delay dentist visits. Still ahead, we'll have the details here on GMSA. Inconsistencies in government and airline policies have caused confusion since the pandemic started. Next on GMSA, our Marilyn Moritz has some tips on what you can do to make flying as safe as possible. Outside with live cam, the brutal temperatures continue. Any rain in the extended forecast? Mike is standing by. In June, Danny Bush boarded an American Airlines flight with high hopes of flying in a safe, healthy environment.
they put out the dialogue as if they were being very safe and considerate for COVID. But when you arrive to the airport, none of those things were happening. Once she began boarding, Daddy said she was appalled to see crowds, passengers without masks, and a jam-packed flight with middle seats filled. Her 20-year-old son has a suppressed immune system, so she takes social distancing seriously. I had anxiety the entire flight. Since her flight, American Airlines says it has tightened requirements for face coverings and now prohibits anyone over age two from flying without a mask. While some airlines make mask wearing mandatory and are blocking off middle seats, Consumer Reports found airlines' COVID policies are all over the map. In many cases, the policies are conflicting. So if you're flying on two different airlines in the same day, you may very well have two different sets of rules. He said without federal rules in place, airlines won't be held accountable. The Department of Transportation has not stepped up and has not protected consumers as we believe they should. So what can you do? Before you book, contact the airline and ask if they guarantee empty middle seats and how strictly they enforce face coverings. Pack a go bag with extra masks, hand sanitizer and wipes. When you board, clean your space, even that air nozzle above. As for Danny, she plans to fly again this month with a different airline and hopes more people will follow guidelines. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. I'm not planning to fly till Christmas time, but uh, I know there's some time between now and then, but I, I think I'm ready. I, you know, it's, there's definitely anxiety. Personally, I don't just because I don't think I can deal with that anxiety. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if you're if you're smart about it. Mm -hmm. I th agreed. 444, 80 degrees. Hank Williams Jr. taking his place alongside his father on the Country Music Hall of Fame. We have more details still ahead on GMSA. New recommendation from the WHO. Next on GMSA, what they're saying about non-essential dental visits. The World Health Organization is now recommending that we delay non-essential dentist visits until the COVID-19 pandemic eases. ABC, ABC's Real Weave, Will Reeve has details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a new warning about visiting the dentist during the pandemic. Dentists have been experts in infection control for over 20 years due to the HIV AIDS scare back in the 80s. So we're used to preparing our offices for infection disease control. Now taking on the World Health Organization over its new recommendation that people put off routine checkups until more is known about COVID-19 and how it could spread during procedures. The American Dental Association firing back, saying it strongly disagrees and that with appropriate PPE, patients and professionals can safely operate. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what the experts say and what you need to know to keep your teeth healthy and to stay safe. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. 448. We're going to check in with Officer Nick. Good morning, Officer Nick. How's the traffic looking out there? It's looking good right now, Sarah, except this one accident we have on I-10 in Wurzbach. Still an active scene right now. Uh, it's going to be right there. Northbound Wurzbach Parkway is still shut down. Or not Wurzbach Parkway, I'm sorry. Wurzbach Road is still shut down there at the 9600 block of I H 10 West on the access road. Let's take a look at it here. And it looks like they just cleared it up. So that's good. That's good news there. Looks like it's open now. That accident on I-10 Wurzbach is now cleared up and Wurzbach going north is opened up. All right, Mike, good morning to you, sir. Right. How are we looking for the rest of today? And is there uh, any rain in the ne next seven days? Uh, in the next seven days, yes. And actually, okay. it's kind of encouraging as far as rain chances are concerned. I have to look that way to make it look right. Anyway, uh, yeah, it is encouraging uh, once we get into next week. But between now and then, it's going to stay hot and it's going to get even hotter at times. Beautiful view from yesterday, and this is uh, what it's going to look like in some areas later on this morning. Right now, it's just it doesn't even look like we've got that kind of haze hanging over the town like it was yesterday. Number wise, it is about the same dew points, maybe down a degree that we'll take anything we can get. Um, it's still humid out there, no matter how you slice it. The Helotus with a dew point is 76 as of right now. Uh, forecast later on today. Yep, we're going to be looking at the low hundreds again. We hit 102 yesterday and that's pretty much going to be 
Very common around the area and even hotter than that. We're looking at 105 in Seguin and New Braunfels and that combined with some of the humidity left over is what's prompting heat advisory for a good chunk of the area again today. We'll show you that map in just a second. So we've still got this high, which is sitting almost on top of us. You can see the clockwise circulation. This is the water vapor imagery showing the moisture, lack of moisture aloft in the atmosphere, but you can see how things are kind of flowing around here. And obviously we didn't have anything popping up yesterday. We have nothing as far as today is concerned as far as really, I mean, we have our morning clouds, but then basically nothing in the afternoon. Pretty much no rain chances along the coast, perhaps. And around the country, there aren't anything any systems that really jump out that show any changes coming about. However, like we said, we've got to wait for a couple of days for some changes. So this afternoon, nothing tomorrow, nothing. As a matter of fact, with temperatures staying about 102, it's from forecasting today, tomorrow, as well as Saturday, we are going to start to get close to records. Not today, the record's about 106, but the, the next couple of days, records are only about 102, 103. So yes, we are going to be close to uh, tying or maybe setting some new record high temperatures. Now, Saturday, a uh, couple of clouds perhaps, but take note of the flow coming in here out of the north, and that's what's going to bring about a chance for some rain Monday. Now you look at this map and go, oh wow, there's going to be widespread rain. This tends to do things with a kind of a broad brush, if you will. Uh, this is just an indication that yes, there will be the chances for some rain around the area Monday and going into the evening hours as well. And then I think even by the middle part of next week, it looks like we start to see some overall weather pattern changes and we have another chance for some rain. So it is encouraging. We just got to grin and bear it for the next few days. 92 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature up to 102, mostly sunny skies. Of course, we do have the heat advisory in effect for the northeastern third of our area. Heat index reading is going to be about uh, well, 105, 110. Some areas maybe even higher than that. And we're looking at 102s the next couple of days. Uh, tomorrow, Saturday, I think are the best chances to maybe tie or set records. Because the record's about 102, 103. Now, Monday, a couple of showers, a couple of storms around here. Maybe then again by Wednesday, I think temperatures finally get knocked back down to what the uh, seasonal normals are. But yeah, it's just going to be. I had to go to the grocery store yesterday. And oh my goodness, that walk across the parking lot almost did me in. Yeah, that's why a lot of people hang out in the frozen food aisle. Um, you yeah, know, you just it, open up, put your head in every once yeah, in a while. Yeah, it's a whole different climate, Mike. If you see Mike doing that at HEB, you know what's going on. Right. It's not a bad idea. It, because, it's because we brought it up. Or the low things with the, the birds in there and the turkeys, you can just kind of... Yes. No, no, don't go in with the turkeys and the, and the Cornish hens or anything. Uh, 452, 80 degrees. A new series premieres tomorrow. We have an inside look on what we can expect on the new comedy, Ted Lasso. an American who's now in charge of a football club despite possessing very little knowledge of the game. Oh, the world could always use a little extra positivity, and that's what Jason Sudeikis is trying to put out there with the new comedy series Ted Lasso, which he co-created and stars in as an overly optimistic American football coach who takes a job running a pro soccer team in England. And Sudeikis tells me it's great to embody a character who's just so dang nice. If you pretend to be horrible all day, you're going to be horrible for at least a half hour or hour when you get done with work. You know, it's just it's just because you're just viewing the world through that lens. Ted Lasso premieres tomorrow on Apple TV Plus. The Broadway musical Diana isn't waiting for theaters to reopen to find an audience. In a unique move, the actors will perform the show in an empty theater, record it, and we'll get to see it on Netflix. Diana tells the story of Princess Diana. It started previews in March, but because of the pandemic shutdown, it never officially opened on Broadway. Diana's set to hit the stage next May, and we should be able to watch it on Netflix before then. A big honor for Bo Cephas. Hank Williams Jr. among the new names joining the Country Music Hall of Fame. He'll take his place alongside his father, country legend Hank Williams Sr., who was inducted in 1961. The class of 2020 also includes Marty Stewart and songwriter Dean Dillon. And happy birthday today to John Slattery. The Mrs. America actor is 58, while Marvel star Sebastian Stan is 38. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Ethanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. It's exactly three minutes till 79 degrees. A new study suggests leaving your baby to cry can be beneficial for them later in life. In our next half hour, we have more on that study. Many students back at school this week. We have more on what students over at Bernie ISD are saying about their first day of classes. Live from Case at 12. 
Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Multiple people injured in a crash that happened overnight. We'll have details on what police say happened. President Donald Trump is giving away more than 100 million masks to school around the country. We have the latest. Outside with live cam, tons of morning humidity, searing summer heat. Mike will have an update as we are one day closer to the weekend. And good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is August 13th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. I know that picture with live cam looked a little hazy out there, but when you walked out this the uh, this morning or I guess tonight, whatever it is for people, it was really clear. I could see the planets and the moon. It was beautiful out there. And on this shift, we never know if it's night or morning, do we, Mike? <laughs> That's true, because what actually is it when it's people are still sleeping? But anyway, yes, we do have uh, some clear skies right now, but of course we're, we'll see our morning clouds build back in here in the next couple of hours and then more sunshine later on today. 79 degrees right now in town. Uh, a lot of 78, still 81 down there in Carrizo Springs and dew point temperature is actually down a degree from yesterday. It's still really humid out there, of course, but I mean, one degree, two degrees does make somewhat of a difference. Of course, we still have somewhat of a heat index to deal with as of right now. And the aquifer dropped down another half a foot yesterday, so obviously this 10 day average is still sitting below 660. And the allergens, low amounts all the way across the board. Well, it was hot yesterday, and it's going to be hot again today. Heat index readings right now are in the uh, low and even mid 80s and add say 20 in some cases almost 25 degrees to these numbers later on today and that's what it's actually going to be feeling like again we do have low amounts of uh, any sort of allergens across the board heat advisory is in effect again for the same counties does not include uh, portions of the hill country but it's from san antonio uh, bear county atascosa county and east and northeast of there so about the northeastern third and we will see uh, heat index readings getting up uh, close to 110 in many locations at one point yesterday when we hit 102 Heat index was 108 out there at the airport. CPS Energy is asking you to conserve between 3 and 7 p.m. today. So warm and humid and then mostly sunny 102 again today. We hit it yesterday and get used to that because we're going to be up around 102. Triple digits continue through the weekend. Tomorrow and Saturday, we're going to be close to uh, record high temperatures. The record today is 106, but like 102, 103. So we are going to be close to that and then encouraging rain chance going into the first part of next week. We've been talking about that for a while. I think it's looking a little bit better. Don't want to get hopes too high, but uh, it's looking promising for uh, Monday. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic. Here's Officer Nick Solis. What's going on, Nick? Uh, not much right now, Mike. Things are looking good all around the city. A lot of green on the screen. Good news there. Let's take a look at some drive times. 151 eastbound to 1604 to 90. You got a nine minute ride right now. And if you're 90 eastbound from 1604 to 35, you got an 11 minute ride. So looking good there. All right, trans guide time. 281 at Hildebrand flowing smooth right now. Not a car on the roadway. 35 in Evans on the north side looking great. Very light traffic and 35 at Brooklyn looking even better. All right, everyone, hope you have a wonderful start to your day. Mark, Sarah. Thank you, Nick. Just into our newsroom, we are following late breaking news reports of a shooting on the city's northeast side. It happened in the 13,900 block of Via Camino. That is near Judson Road and Nacogdoches Road. Our Katrina Weber is live at the scene. Katrina, what do we know so far? Good morning. Well, we found out that it was a young man in his, uh, in his 20s, 22 years old, who was shot right inside this house back here where police have been working since just before 4 o'clock. You can see the porch light on there. They've been in and around this house. They tell us that uh, the man's father told them that his son heard a knock on the door, told him that he was going to go outside for just a minute, and he says within seconds of his son going outside, he heard multiple gunshots. The son then came back and telling him he had been shot. He suffered a wound to his arm and his foot. He was taken to a hospital. Now, police say they have not uh, had much cooperation from the 22-year-old man who was shot. Uh, he is not cooperating, but they do believe there were at least two or three men who came to the door the, early this morning and then shot him. So they are trying to get whatever physical evidence they can. We see about 10 evidence markers right there on the lawn. Uh, and so they were trying to collect that because, again, they say that the man who was shot, not giving them a whole lot to go on, but they do believe, again, that there were two or three men who came to the door this morning and shot him. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, two people recovering in the hospital after a high speed crash on the northwest side happened around 1 30 this morning at I 10 of Wurzbach. Police tell us a Ford Explorer was being driven at a high rate of speed down the frontage road of I 10. The driver ran a red light and crashed into a vehicle exiting the McDonald's parking lot. Police say two men and two women were inside the Explorer at the time of the crash. Both men got out of the vehicle and began to run off, but were quickly caught by police. Those men, along with a woman, were taken into custody. Police tell us the victim, along with another woman who was inside the Explorer, were taken to University Hospital, both in stable condition. Police say at least one suspect is facing several charges at this time. South San ISD says they are committed to starting the year off virtually. The district shared pictures of starting their first day of school at home. The district plans on following Metro Health's guidelines by remaining with virtual learning until at least October. Bernie ISD has given parents the option of in person or online learning. The district has stocked up on personal protective equipment and put safety measures in place to protect students on campus. Bernie High School students noticed a difference. Students say people seem to be following guidelines, but acknowledge it's to, if it's too soon to tell if it's working. You know, last year without the mask, it was better, but you know, this year, it's fine with the mask. I didn't think it was a problem. Everybody wore their masks. I didn't see one kid that didn't. Like, I saw a few people that like were told to put on their masks, but other than other than that, nothing. Bernie ISD is based in Kendall County and has some schools in Bear County. Well, many students have already started going back to school today. Parents over at Shirt Cibolo and Universal City ISD are getting their kids ready to start off the academic year through online learning. At KSAT.com, we have a full page dedicated to back to school and all you need to know about all the measures schools are implementing among the pandemic. For more information, just click on the back to school tab. President Donald Trump is announcing the federal government will be providing up to 125 million masks to schools nationwide. The White House is encouraging students and staff to use masks, but there's no mandate. The White House COVID-19 advisor Dr. Scott Atlas says the president's priority is to open the schools and open them safely. The push to get students back in the classroom comes as the U.S. is averaging nearly 53,000 new cases per day, according to Johns Hopkins University. Several members of U.S. Congress have been quietly blocking arms sales to Turkey. This comes in response to Turkey's purchase of a Russian-made missile defense system last year. President Trump's administration has yet to impose mandatory sanctions on the country. A congressional aide told CNN that some sales have been allowed to proceed, specifically those in direct support of NATO operations in which Turkey participates. It's 507 and 79 degrees. Uber and Lyft threatening to end service in California. The reason behind those threats still to come on GMSA. And are you one of those parents that immediately runs towards your babies when they start crying? Next on GMSA, we will tell you about a study that suggests this can have some behavioral effects in your baby. Outside with live cam, how hot today? It's now 508. More to come here on GMSA. Glad you're with us. We'll be right back. Five Eleven, welcome back. Throughout the years, researchers have told parents to attend to their babies promptly if they cry. But a new study suggests babies who cry it out are not any more likely to have behavioral issues later on. Our Stephanie Serna has the story. It's the sound parents of infants dread in the middle of the night. But should you run to your little one's rescue right away? In a new study, researchers in the United Kingdom examined 170 infants and their moms. They followed the babies in the first week at 3, 6, and 18 months and assessed whether the frequency parents intervened immediately when their little ones cried was associated with later attachment and behavior. Results showed allowing babies to cry it out a few times when they were first born and more often at three months was linked to shorter crying times at 18 months. And the number of times a mom reported leaving babies to cry it out was not associated with infant behavior, development, or attachment issues. Over time, parents can often identify a baby's needs by the way he or she is crying. Picking up on any patterns can help them better respond to their baby's cries. The study found two thirds of the parents instinctively picked up their babies when they were newborns. But as they got older, some parents would wait a bit to see if the babies would calm themselves. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. 
512, 79 degrees. Sarah Cooper became a social media sensation after lip syncing President Donald Trump. Now she is having her own Netflix special. We have more about what we'll be seeing in the show still ahead on GMSA. Next on GMSA, new prototype supercar can travel 1,000 miles on a tank of hydrogen. Details in today's Tech Bites. Now, Simparica Trio simplifies protection. Ticks and fleas? See ya! Heartworm disease? No way! Simparica Trio is the first chewable that delivers all this protection. And Simparica Trio is demonstrated safe for puppies. It's simple. Go with Simparica Trio. This drug class has been associated with neurologic adverse reactions, including seizures, used with caution in dogs with a history of these disorders. Protect him with all your heart. Simparica Trio. Just between us, cleaning with a mop and bucket is such a hassle. Ugh. Well, I switched to Swiffer WetJet, and it's awesome. It's an all-in-one that absorbs dirt and grime deep inside. And it helps prevent streaks and haze. Stop cleaning and start Swiffering. In a world where temptation lurked around every corner, a league of baby bell cheese helped us realize another snack was possible. Baby Bell joined the goodness. Five sixteen Uber and Lyft threatening to end service in California after a judge in that state ruled the companies must reclassify all their workers as employees. ABC's Kenneth Moten has that and more in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, a potential major move by Uber and Lyft. Both say they might stop operating in California if they're forced to make drivers employees. Currently, the drivers are independent contractors. Both plan to appeal a judge's ruling ordering the change, which Uber and Lyft say they can't afford. Facebook is rolling out a new notification screen that's meant to give users more context about virus-related links before they share them. It also directs people to an information center that contains credible data from health authorities. Finally, this is the new XP1 from Hyperion Motors. It's powered by hydrogen and can reach over 220 miles per hour. The company says it can travel a thousand miles before refueling. Right now, it's only a prototype, but it's expected to go into production in 2022. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. What do you do at 220 miles per hour? I, I want to find out. <laughs> Officer Nick, hopefully no one's going that fast out on the roads this morning. I was just about to say, don't go 220 miles an hour down I-10, please. But all right, look, green all over the screen. Things are looking great out there right now. No accidents on the major highways. If you're headed to work right now, expect a smooth ride. Let's just take a look at the trans guide. 90 and 36 looking good right now. Uh, 10 at ProBant, that looks great. 10 and 410, 10 West and 410, I'm sorry, looking good. 281 and Hildebrand flowing smoothly. And what else do we have here? Let's see, 35 and Evans on the north side looks good all around the city right now. You know, I didn't intentionally rhyme that earlier. <laughs> yeah, but not the 220 that caught my attention was the thousand miles on a tank, a tank. if you will. But it's hydro I wonder hydrogen. I wonder how much that costs to fill up, though, with the hydrogen. That's a really good question. I mean, it's not like Valero has a hydrogen pump, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, We're going to get some hydrogen. Cells, you know, that's what they use on spacecraft and stuff. So that'd be a thousand miles. That'd be great. So think if it was like a penny a tank. Can you imagine that? Not bad. Yeah. We're, we're heading in a different direction, that's for sure. <laughs> yes, indeed. All right, uh, take a look at this picture. And, uh, you know, Sarah, you were talking about this earlier, how we have some clear skies right now, so you can do a little moon gazing and beautiful view. And this was from yesterday, and so this is getting smaller and smaller. It is the waning gibbous. The new moon is going to be next Wednesday, the 19th. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. Uh, we'll see some of our morning clouds in here. So if you're not out right now, taking a look at the moon, if we still have some some uh, clear skies, the clouds will kind of fill in and then they're going to be getting rid of, uh, we're going to be getting rid of the clouds, excuse me, later on this morning. Uh, 79 here in town, 78 Ball Verde, mid 70s Hill Country and computer model, nothing is going on today. And there could be a 
you know, a sea breeze shower. That's going to be about it. We'll have plenty of sunshine today, and that's going to allow temperatures to skyrocket again today. We're going to be up in the low hundreds. We hit 102 yesterday. We'll be up there again today. Nothing is cooking in the Gulf of Mexico nor in the Caribbean. Out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, though, we are still looking at, at tropical depression number 11, and it is forecast to become a uh, tropical storm, and it would be tropical storm Josephine. It's going to be grazing by the Lesser Antilles. Antilles over the course of the weekend and now it's looking like even since yesterday it's making a bit more of a northwardly and right hand bend by the first part of next week so maybe maybe it would affect uh, northeast portion of the United States, but it looks like this may actually bend even a little bit more, so it would only be uh, Bermuda that would be affected by that. All right, back to our weather. That's the thing affecting us, that area of high pressure, which has, again, been sitting almost right on top of us, keeping us very, very hot, suppressing any sort of uh, rain chances around here basically whatsoever. However, by the weekend, it starts to work its way off to the west a little bit more, and it's still going to be hot over the weekend. We're still looking at low hundreds, but by Monday, we get into more of this northerly flow, and that's what's going to be pulling down a disturbance around here, giving us that chance for some rain on Monday, and then it looks like again on Tuesday, and also notice as we go into the middle part of next week, this thing tends to kind of weaken just a little bit, we don't have that darker shade of orange there, and that's going to lessen its grip on us as far as temperatures. Also, now that's not on the best side of us. That little low is trying to develop right there. You want to be on the right hand side for better rain chances, but at least we've got some disturbances around here, so we don't have that tight lid on the atmosphere anymore by the middle part of next week. So we're looking at at least a couple of rain shots next week. 92 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, 102 today. Not a record, but it's going to be hot. Heat index reading is going to be way up there, so we do have the heat advisory in the northeasterly third of our viewing area. And 102s the next few days, close to records uh, tomorrow and Saturday. Sunday, still low hundreds. And then going to put a 30% chance on some rain by Monday and maybe by the middle part of the week as well. Come on, 30%. Yeah. I like that. Shower's a storm. <laughs> yeah. Maybe shower, yeah. Don't get too excited yet but it's looking encouraging. Don't get excited, Sarah Custom. No, I'm always excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always excited. Yeah. 521, 79 degrees. Winners of the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge will be announced this week. This and more entertainment news next on GMSA. But first, lottery numbers pick three, two, four, zero, fireball eight. Daily four numbers, two, five, four, two, fireball four. Cash five, four, seven, 13, 16, 31. Texas lotto, six, 15, 25, 35, 39, 41. And the Powerball, 2, 6, 18, 36, 37, Powerball, 21, Power Play, 2. Just about 525, let's take a look at the latest headlines from the world of entertainment. Here's CNN's Douglas Hyde with the Hollywood Minute. Beyond the palace stuffs, beyond the photographs, a fairy tale A stage musical based on the life of the late Princess Diana will premiere on Netflix next year ahead of its reopening on Broadway, which is now set for May. Diana, a new musical, was originally supposed to open on the Great White Way back in March before the pandemic hit. The special will be filmed without an audience and feature the original Broadway cast. But ultimately, this is about continuing to tell our story. Winners of the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge will be announced this week at a virtual awards show. The contest is open to filmmakers of all backgrounds and honors films featuring people with disabilities both in front of and behind the camera. Woman, man, camera, TV. So they say, could you repeat that? Sarah Cooper became a social media sensation lip syncing President Trump, and it's led to her own Netflix special. Sarah Cooper, Everything's Fine, will premiere in the fall and is described by the streaming giant as a variety show that deals with issues of politics, race, gender, class, and other light subjects. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hyde. 526, 79 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, the owner of a popular wing restaurant is sharing his experience after he was robbed at gunpoint and how it's affecting him today. President Donald Trump's administration remains adamant about reopening U.S. classrooms. In our next half hour, the health recommendations they've released for schools to follow.
Good morning. It is Thursday, August 13th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. I know it's it's been just brutally hot outside and it's humid and you walk out and your hair just like sticks to your face immediately. It, it, that, Mike Osterhage, exactly that. And I know you've experienced that on a daily basis lately and we feel for you. The hair sticking, yeah. Y yeah. It was long enough, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, not to, to joke about this because it is uh, actually on the dangerous side when you uh, head outside yesterday afternoon, past couple, and as well as today, it's going to be like that because we are going to have those heat index readings way, way up there. So we'll be up to 92, partly cloudy skies today at noon, 102 again today, like yesterday. Yesterday. And at that time, when we hit 102, we still had enough uh, humidity out there that the heat index was pushing at 110, about 108, 107, 108 out there at the airport. And some folks had even higher uh, heat index than that. So you really have to watch it when you're outside. Still hot this evening. Temperatures uh, actually won't drop down below 100 until probably just after dinner time. Low amounts of mold, pigweed, fall elm. We have a heat advisory in effect. Same aerial outline as yesterday for San Antonio, Bear County, Atascosa County, and then east and northeast from there, the northeastern third of our viewing area. Again, those heat index readings are going to be uh, up in the 105, 110 range for most folks. And of course, CPS Energy is asking that you lower your demand between 3 and 7 o'clock. It is going to stay in the low hundreds through Saturday, actually through Sunday. We'll be looking at uh, close to record high temperatures, uh, flirting with records tomorrow as well as Saturday. Rain chances are looking a bit more encouraging for the start of next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and Officer Nick Solis. And I know you had that big accident earlier this morning. Is that gone? Yeah, it's gone now, Mike. Everything's looking good right now. If you're headed to work, uh, expect a smooth ride. All the highways looking good. A lot of green there. Light traffic everywhere around the city. Let's just take a look at these drive times. If you're 10 westbound from the northwest side of I-35 to 1604, you got 11 minute ride. And if you're 10 eastbound from the northwest side of 1604 to IH-35, 13 minutes. Really good times there. All right, taking a look at the trans guy. 10 at Crossroads looking good right now. Light traffic's flowing smoothly. 10 at Wurzbach. This is where we had that big accident earlier. Everything's now open. Opened up there. Good news. And uh, 1604 and Bandera on the northwest side looking great. All right, everyone, remember wear that seat belt, go the speed limit. We want everyone to get into work safely. Mark, Sarah. Thank you, Nick. Still following late breaking news on the city's northeast side where a person was shot inside a home. This happened in the 13,000 block of Via Camino near Judson Road and Nacogdoches Road. Our Katrina Weber is live on scene. Katrina, any updates? Well, we have did get information from police. They left here, though, without making any arrests. They left within the last five minutes, but they did spend some time in and around this house where uh, police say a 22-year-old man was shot, shot after answering a knock at the door. Now, we saw them put out about 10 evidence markers. They also spent some time going in that car right there, and we can see there's a bullet hole in the back of the car. Let me show you also the video from earlier this morning. This happened just before 4 o'clock this morning. Police say uh, the father of the victim told them that his son heard a knock on the door, said he was going outside for just a few minutes, and within seconds of that 22-year-old man stepping outside, his father says he heard several gunshots ring out. His son then came back in the house saying he had been shot outside, shot twice in the arm and foot. He was rushed to a hospital, but police say his wounds are not life-threatening. They also say that he has not been cooperating with them, so they don't have any information on who came to his house, but they do believe there were two to three people who knocked on the door early this morning and then shot the man who lives here. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Now to the latest two SAPD officers under indefinite suspensions for using excessive force on a handcuffed suspect. The record shows Michael Brewer caused, quote, unnecessary physical violence when placing his left knee on the man's neck. And then Andre Vargas lifted the handcuffed man off the ground with his arm causing, quote, unnecessary and unwarranted pain. Disciplinary records also reveal the suspect was not resisting arrest. The incident happened in November of 2019. The pandemic is hampering efforts to place foster care children in loving homes. Sharonda Tillman, a foster adopt recruit recruiting specialist with Child Protective Services, says it's always been difficult to find families in rural communities to sign up. 
but the pandemic has made it even more difficult since the recruiting locations have been shut down. They have had to host virtual meetings, put out flyers at businesses or announcements in local papers. But she says in rural communities, face to face recruitment always works best. The hardest counties to reach are those west of Bear County all the way to Valverde. I can look across the gamut and see that we still have over 500 children who are free for adoption, but without a placement. And anyone who, again, has a willing heart and, um, and an open mind to be able to learn can, can, um, can be a foster and or adopt parent. Tillman, who was in the system herself, says it's important to keep children close to the communities they are familiar with. The children in need of loving homes range in ages from infants to 22 year olds. For more information on how you, you, you can become a foster parent, you can go to our website at ksat.com. President Donald Trump's administration remains adamant about reopening U.S. classrooms. They released eight general recommendations for schools similar to earlier hygiene tips. That comes on the heels of some students and staff entering isolation after testing positive for the coronavirus. CNN's John Lawrence reports. President Trump announcing the federal government is providing up to 125 million masks to schools nationwide. My administration also stands ready to deploy CDC teams to support schools that are opening and schools that need help in safety. The White House is encouraging students and staff to use masks, but there's no mandate. The president's priority is to open the schools and open them safely and have parents uh, have the options to either use open schools or do whatever they can to eventually get back to open schools. But some health experts are skeptical about the White House's new coronavirus advisor, Dr. Scott Atlas. A neuroradiologist, someone with no public health experience, uh, who has advocated for herd immunity, now advising the President of the United States. Herd immunity means one million dead Americans. That's what it would take to get to herd immunity. That's not a plan. That's a catastrophe. The push to get students back in class comes as the U.S. is averaging nearly 53,000 new cases per day, according to Johns Hopkins University. That's an 11% drop from the week before. We got to go to school. We got to open up. We got to open up our schools and open up our businesses. And a lot of it has been open, but we can do better. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The president also said Wednesday that the U.S. is, quote, working with Europe on the difficulties, in quote, related to the COVID-19 outbreak. The director for Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is urging Americans to follow public health measures. Dr. Robert Redfield says if people don't wear a mask, social distance and follow the CDC guidelines, this could, quote, be the worst fall in U.S. public health history. Redfield also wants Americans to get the flu vaccine this year. He says the CDC is prepared with 10 million doses for uninsured adults. As for the coronavirus vaccine, he adds he is cautiously optimistic there will be one by the start of 2021. Well, Americans counting on emergency coronavirus aid from Washington may have to wait until fall. Negotiations over a new coronavirus aid package have all but ended. The White House and Congress far apart on the size, scope and approach on relief for households, schools and a national strategy to contain the virus. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin tried to revive stalled talks yesterday, but House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Senate Democratic leader Chuck Schumer dismissed what they called an overture. Joe Biden says he has raised $26 million in the 24 hours after he named Kamala Harris as his running mate, doubling his previous one-day record. The campaign hopes this is the beginning of a big fundraising push in the final stretch before Election Day. Democrats are close to matching, if not surpassing, the massive $300 million cash stockpile President Donald Trump and Republicans reported in July. 538, 79 degrees. And go Spurs, go! It's game day for the silver and black. We have that schedule next on GMSA. A restaurant owner robbed a gunpoint next on GMSA. Talks about his experience and how it is affecting him today. Like Mike was saying earlier, we definitely have that heat advisory in effect that can triple digits that can reach pretty dangerous levels. We'll talk about that and what you can expect in this upcoming week and weekend. By 41, about a week and a half ago, everything changed for the owner of popular wing restaurant Wayne's Wings. He was robbed at gunpoint. He spoke to KSAT 12 about the experience and how it's affecting him today. Yeah, he has a great uh, 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 tall, you 
know, I'm having flashbacks from it. Um, you know, it, it really has me afraid. It's the thing I love the most in my life. It's my business. And I'm almost afraid to go there because of what happened. I guess it's, 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 it's you know, it's just a life lesson. You know, you just can't trust anybody. And, uh, you know, I just have to watch my back at all times. And, you know, these are the times we're living in today. You know, it's, it's sad, it's sad. It hurts. I thank God that I'm just here. And I just want to be you known as a good person, just somebody that people can look up to. But, you know, it makes me even want to start doing so much more for everybody, the community, you know, and I'm all about doing things right. So it means a lot to me. Let's, let's do the right thing right now. Well, as of right now, that suspect remains on the loose. If you have any information on this case, you can call SAPD or text a tip to 847-7411. Right now it is 4, 543, 79 degrees. The FDA is recalling some products still ahead on GMSA. We tell you more about the rec recalls you need to be aware of. More hand sanitizers have been added onto the recall list. Nearly 150 different brands are being pulled from the market. The products have been deemed unsafe by the Food and Drug Administration because they may be contaminated with methanol or contain low levels of ethyl alcohol or isopropyl alcohol. Reports of blindness, hospitalizations, and death have been attributed to the contaminated hand sanitizers. For a full list of the brands being recalled, you can visit our website on ksat.com. Just look for this story on the homepage. The FDA has announced that Fresh House is recalling its lemons, limes, Valencia oranges, and red potatoes due to potential contamination with listeria. So far, there have been no reported illnesses from these products. Give you a quick update and a reminder the silver and black play again today. The Spurs take on the Utah Jazz 5 30 this evening. The Spurs are still in 11th place and they need to be in ninth for a chance at the postseason. As always, go Spurs, go. A win today definitely helps. A few other things need to happen, but we will begin with that uh, win today. The final game of the NBA restarts. It's gone by so quickly. Hasn't it? And done pretty well. What, five and two, right, Nick? Yeah, five and two. Five and two. Yeah. Amazing. Let's, uh, speaking of Nick, let's go to the latest and get the, an update on how things are looking on the roads at 547. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Things are looking good right now. If you're on the way to work, expect a smooth ride. Couldn't ask for a better start to your Thursday morning. Traffic-wise, things are looking great out there. Let's take a look at the Trans Guy. 10 at Dezavala, looking good. Traffic looks great right now. Uh, 10 at Hebner, up the road there. Look, that looks just as good. Traffic flowing smoothly, still very light. Uh, 10 at Crossroads, all I-10 right now, looking good. Let's see if they give me one more I-10. I-10 at Wurzbach, going back uh, east there, is looking great. All right, Mark, Sarah? Thank you, Nick. And you know we're in the thick of it with the summer heat when the uh, Weather Service and uh, other authorities remind us about heat advisories. Well, yeah, and, and I, I guess I've failed to emphasize today that the heat advisory obviously is in effect today, but it's in effect through tomorrow. Yeah. So yeah. they are just not even going to... Kind of accentuates the negative, doesn't it? Yeah, and I would have... I would venture a guess that it's even going to uh, be in effect for Saturday as well. They may reissue one for Saturday, and it's a little bit dependent upon the uh, the humidity. But, uh, well, everything's coming out, and I don't know how this guy's surviving the heat, but this hairy little thing came out to bask in the sun. Really? I thought they'd be hiding in the shade, but... They like rocks. I know I see he's buy some rocks. I used to have some in my old neighborhood, and they would hang out the rocks. Tarantulas would? Oh, yeah. Stay yeah. away from the rocks. Get the heebie-jeebies just standing there, Mike? Pardon me? You got the heebie-jeebies just standing there? Better that than the snakes. Well, that's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, we've got uh, heat and humidity around this morning, of course, and dew point temperatures uh, will remain 
just enough to put those heat index readings up there. So when you have temperatures up around 102, it doesn't take much humidity, obviously, to get those heat index readings above 105, close to 110. And again, the, the heat advisory is in effect through tomorrow evening, but the next few days uh, with those dew points may be low enough to where we don't quite reach the criteria on Saturday, but I think it's going to be a close call, perhaps even on Sunday as well. Then things are going to start to change once we get into the uh, first part of next week and even more so the middle part of next week. So satellite picture, obviously there's nothing going on around here and uh, yeah, big picture. Yes, there are patches of rain here and there, uh, but there's nothing that really just jumps off the map. There's nothing that you can look at on the satellite picture and go, okay, there's a, you know, a big low moving on in here or big changes coming about. So this is the, uh, the pattern that we are in and it will not be changing for the next couple of days has been emphasizing got the flow off the Gulf of Mexico down here at the surface, which, you know, there's always the chance for a sea breeze shower, but not that much. However, start to see some minor changes by the weekend as we get the upper level winds coming in here in the flow from the north. And so we get some of these clouds moving on in here. And then by Monday, that's when, and again, don't look at this and say, wow, it's going to be raining all over the place. This is kind of a broad brush, but it's just an indication that there's going to be the chances for some rain. I'm putting about a 30% chance on it as of right now for Monday throughout the day, as well as then by the middle part of the week, we'll start to see a couple of little disturbances around here. And the reason for it is this high, which is still in place. It's not moving at all. Uh, we are going to continue with the low temp, low hundreds for temperatures, but by the first part of the week, then it edges off to the west just enough and we get into this northerly flow and that's pulling down some of these little disturbances. That's what's going to give us the chance for some rain by Monday. And then by the middle of the week, it really starts to weaken and we'll have just a, enough of a weakness in the atmosphere, I guess you could say, to where we'll see some of those uh, pop up showers and even a couple of thunderstorms by the middle part of the week. So I guess the overall thing to say about it is there is an end in sight to this hot weather pattern that we've been in for a while, but we're not done with it yet. 92 at noon, partly cloudy skies, 102 for a high temperature. Of course, the heat advisory is in effect or goes into effect at one o'clock this afternoon through seven o'clock tomorrow. And that means heat index reading is going to be about 105 to 110. Uh, also, high temperatures, we're going to be flirting with records Friday, Saturday. We'll still be at 101 on Sunday, and then rain chance comes in here by the first part of next week. About a 30% chance right now, so not great, but better than nothing. Yeah, 30. We'll do it. Yeah, We'll sure. take it. Stay, in, stay inside today for sure. Yep. 551, 79 degrees. If sci-fi horror is your genre of preference, the Russian thriller Sputnik might be your thing. Next on GMSA, we have an inside look to this and other films debuting this week. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, two, four, zero, fireball eight, daily four, two, five, four, two, fireball four. Cash five, four, seven, 13, 16, 31. Texas lotto, six, 15, 25, 35, 39, 41. And powerball, two, six, 18, 36, 37, powerball 21, power play two. A ghost, an alien, and a scary rideshare driver featured in a trio of new movies that debuted this week. CNS Douglas Hyde has details. You know you did, right? You left somebody behind. These memories, they're all that I have left. The supernatural romance, Endless, is kind of like the old Patrick Swayze, Demi Moore movie Ghost. Only this time, teenagers are involved. The love story centers on a woman who blames herself for her boyfriend's death and then later encounters his ghost. Together, they must learn to let the past go. If sci-fi horror is more your speed, the Russian thriller Sputnik aims to deliver. When a cosmonaut survives a mysterious accident in space, he returns to Earth with an alien creature inside him that leaves his body at night and feeds on terror. The dark comedy Spree focuses on a different kind of monster, Kurt the Creepy Rideshare Driver. 
Kurt will stop at nothing to create horrifying content for his social media followers, even if it means killing his passengers. What we're doing here is important. We're creating a brand. In Hollywood, I'm Douglas Hyde. Astronomers have found a new galaxy more than 12 billion light years away. Check it out. Astronomers say it looks a lot like our Milky Way. A uh, doppelganger, if you will. This picture published yesterday in the journal Nature. It's been named SPT0418-47. Got that? A galaxy more than 12 billion light years away, which means we're seeing this galaxy as it appeared when the universe was only 1.4 billion years old. Mind-boggling stuff. Back to school season, but only a small number of students are actually going back to classroom. Next hour of GMSA. We'll hear what students think of learning during a pandemic. And Officer Nick Solis is here from SAPD coming up uh, as we take a live look at 410 and Bandera. Time saver traffic at the top of the hour. Police are searching for up to three people, they say, who may be involved in a shooting on the northeast side. But right now, they say the victim is not cooperating with the investigation. So uh, at lunch, they had like seats crossed off and stuff for like six feet apart. So lunch was pretty different because you had to separate. Students in some local districts are finally back in class during the middle of a pandemic, and they're finding the virus is impacting every aspect of their time in school. This morning, we'll hear some new reactions from students up at Bernie ISD. Taking a look outside with live cams, beautiful clear sky there, 79 degrees, but Mike may be having a warning about a heat advisory. You're gonna to wanna to pay close attention to his forecast in just a bit. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is August 13th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. If you were outside yesterday, I was outside watering my grass and I just kept throwing some of the water on me because it, it would literally just dry up instantly, it felt like. That heat index is brutal and Mike is talking a heat advisory that is lasting over a span of not just one day, but several. Yeah, we had the heat advisory yesterday from one till seven and today, uh, just a couple of hours ago, Weather Service issued another heat advisory, but this one they just decided, hey, we're just gonna cover it all the way through tomorrow. So and I wouldn't be surprised if another one would be issued for Saturday. It's gonna be kind of dependent upon the, uh, the humidity, but still we're not gonna be seeing any, uh, any big changes whatsoever. So as far as temperatures right now, mid upper 70s, where we've been the past couple of days, of course, it feels a few degrees warmer than that when you factor in all of the uh, humidity. Uh, pollen, everything is on the low side as of right now. There's the heat advisory. It's the same outline, includes the same counties as yesterday. Uh, Bear, Atascosa County, and then going up I-35 and then straight off to the east, so about the northeastern third of our area. And again, heat uh, index readings are going to be about 105, 110. At one point yesterday when we hit our high of 102 and there was still enough humidity that the uh, heat index was approaching about 107, 108 out there at the airport. So again, that's in the shade too. If you're in the direct sun, if you're walking across the parking lot, it's going to feel 10, 15, 20 degrees hotter than that. So you really, really obviously have to watch it. And again, as we were talking about, this is in effect up until 7 o'clock tomorrow night. So all the way through the rest of today as well as tomorrow. And CPS Energy is asking if you can lower your energy usage between 3 and 7 o'clock this afternoon. 102, high temperature, not a record today. We may be flirting with a couple of records the next few days, but we're also going to be flirting with some rain chances. So that's coming up first part of next week. We've got to make it through the next few days, first of all. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. And Officer Nick Solis, I see a big red dot, which is not good news. Definitely one accident right here. Mike just came out, though, however, uh, so I didn't have time to put the intersection, but it is eastbound 90. Past, just past 410, so you're going eastbound 90, just past the 410 north and south exit. We got an accident right there. Uh, looks like it's a two vehicle accident when the vehicle flipped over. Should be affecting traffic, I'm assuming. I'll get you more information on this accident when I can. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the trans guy now. 281 at Hildebrand, flowing very smooth, looking nice. 35 at Evans, definitely we have a 
uh, more traffic. Traffic going about light to moderate now. 35 at Brooklyn. That looks great. And uh, do one more. Let's see what we got. 35 at San Marcos flowing very smoothly. All right, everyone, please make sure to wear that seatbelt and get to work safely. Sarah? Thank you, Nick. Developing story we are following this morning. San Antonio police are looking for a few men they say are involved in a northeast side shooting. Officers say it happened in the 13,900 block of Via Camino around 4 this morning. That is by Lookout and Judson Roads. They say a 22 year old man was in a home and heard a knock at the door. He told his dad he was stepping outside for a minute. The dad says he heard several shots and his son came in saying he'd been shot in the arm and the leg. Detectives at the scene say they are looking for two or three men, but the victim is not cooperating. The victim is expected to recover from his injuries. New this morning, two people in the hospital, three more in police custody after a crash on the northwest side. Police say a driver and a Ford Explorer ran a red light at Wurzbach and I-10 around 1.30 this morning. That driver crashed into another car. Two men inside the Explorer tried to get out and run. Officers chased after them. One of them tried to punch an officer before they were both arrested. Two women in the Explorer as well. One was taken into police custody, the other to University Hospital. The driver of the other car was taken to the hospital and both are expected to recover. And police tell us one man in, is in the hospital this morning after being hit in the head with a hatchet. Police say it happened around two this morning at the place apartments on East Commerce. That's down the street from the AT&T Center. Officers say a man broke into an apartment and tried to rob the man inside. After a fight, the alleged robber hit the man in the head with a hatchet and then ran away. The victim was taken to Bamsey, where he remains in serious condition. Police are still looking for the suspect. San Antonio Police Department investigating two officers for using excessive force on a handcuffed suspect. The department indefinitely suspended officers Michael Brewer and Andre Vargas last night. Disciplinary records reveal that a suspect was not resisting arrest during an incident from November 26, 2019. Records show Brewer caused, quote, unnecessary physical violence when placing his left knee on the man's neck. Vargas lifted the handcuffed man off the ground and with his arm, causing, quote, unnecessary and unwarranted pain. Vargas also used a taser on the man. San Antonio city officials are focusing on changing the police union contract despite calls from local activists to defund the police. The current contract expires next September. The mayor drafted a resolution that would make reforming officer disciplinary procedures a top negotiation priority. A defender's investigation found officers who appealed their, firing, their, their firings got their jobs back about two thirds of the time, either by third party arbitration or from the police chief reconsidering. According to the latest Bear Facts case at Rivard Report poll, 68% of participants said police unions were barriers to accountability. Police Chief William McManus says he is not opposed to an appeal process, but the current process bothers him. And I don't think that, that someone who coming in here who doesn't know the culture of the city, doesn't know the department, makes that, makes that decision and doesn't have to live with it and then flies out on the next plane, I just have an issue with that. City Manager Eric Walsh proposed a months long process to reconsider the role of SAPD in the community that could end up changing what kind of calls they respond to. However, he does not expect that process to start until the spring. Today, students at Shirt Cibolo Universal City ISD will start school remotely. Students in the district will continue virtual instruction through September 8th at the earliest. More districts will start school on Monday, such as SAISD. Southside ISD, Alamo Heights, and Northeast ISD to see when your child's expected to start school and to see remote learning guidelines. Just head to the back to school page at ksat.com. Speaking of guidelines, three local school districts are easing some restrictions on dress codes when it comes to remote learning. SAISD, Northeast ISD, and Northside ISD say they do not have any initial plans to enforce dress codes while students attend class virtually. Officials with the district say they will be on the lookout for inappropriate attire and address it on a case by case basis. Bernie ISD gave parents the option of in person or online learning this year. As of yesterday, first day students were able to go back to classes. District has stocked up on personal protective equipment and put safety measures in place to protect students on campus, but it didn't stop Bernie High School students from noticing a difference. Well, last year, Without the mask, it was better, but you know, this year, it's fine with the mask. I didn't think it was a problem. Everybody wore their mask. I didn't see one kid that didn't, like, I saw a few people that, like, 
were told to put on their masks, but other than, other than that, nothing. Students we talked with say people seem to be following guidelines, but acknowledge it's too soon to see if it's working. Local health officials report 26 more people have died from COVID-19. For those deaths were investigated between June 12th and August 11th, as Bear County continues to get the updated state numbers. 261 deaths are still being investigated right now. Meanwhile, Mayor Ron Nirenberg says there are 291 new cases of the virus in our community. That brings a seven day average to 259 cases per day. He says the health care system still stress score. The stress score is still high. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says city and county parks will be closed for Labor Day weekend. He says the positivity rate in Bear County is still high and wants to prevent large crowds from gathering. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf says the order is similar to ones issued for Easter and the 4th of July. They say they do not want to see a large increase in cases like what happened after Memorial Day weekend. The director of the CDC is issuing a new warning. He says unless everyone wears a mask this fall could be the worst that America has ever seen. Despite encouraging trends across much of the country, researchers are explaining why this fall could be, quote, a perfect storm. ABC's Andrea Fujii has more. This morning, nearly half the country seeing deaths on the rise from coronavirus. And though hospitalizations are decreasing, infections are increasing in some of the nation's largest cities. Houston reporting nearly 1,000 virus deaths as Texas schools prepare to start the school year. The countdown to the first day of school in person is like a ticking time bomb unless we do this right. County officials say children should not be in class, but the governor says that decision is up to local districts. Just north of San Antonio, this school adding plexiglass barriers and mandatory masks for everyone. They make me feel safe, but I'm just really, really excited to go back. <laughs> but in Georgia, nearly 1,200 students and staff quarantined after dozens tested positive in Cherokee County, now forcing the closure of two high schools. And at the school where these images of students without masks went viral, and dozens tested positive, students are now protesting a decision to switch to partial online learning. We shouldn't be forced to go online because others are fearful. President Trump Wednesday reiterating his call to reopen classrooms. So sitting in isolation with a computer, looking at a laptop, is not the same as being out there in the real world. CDC Director Dr. Robert Redfield warning if people don't wear masks, we could see our worst fall ever. Well, I'm not asking some of America to do it. We all got to do it. Researchers warn with current virus levels, a fall resurgence threatens parts of the Midwest and East Coast, including New York. After an uptick of cases in one Brooklyn neighborhood, New York City is now working to get all residents there tested. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. Now 6, 11, 79 degrees. A dispute over labeling Uber and Lyft drivers as employees could cause trouble for the industry in California. See why the companies say they might stop offering rides right now. If you're a new parent, listen up. Turns out letting your child cry may not be as bad as you think. Trust us, we have the latest research after the break. And I think we're all crying right now about the weather we've been experiencing the last couple of days. It's hot outside, lots of heat advisories that you need to pay attention to. Mike will let you know about that when we come back. Six fifteen. Throughout the years, some researchers have told parents to attend to their babies promptly if they cry. But a new study suggests babies who cry it out are not any more likely to have behavioral behavioral issues later on. Sometimes we all just need a good cry, right? Stephanie Serna has the story. It's the sound parents of infants dread in the middle of the night. But should you run to your little one's rescue right away? In a new study, researchers in the United Kingdom examined 170 infants and their moms. They followed the babies in the first week at 3, 6, and 18 months and assessed whether the frequency parents intervened immediately when their little ones cried was associated with later attachment and behavior. Results showed allowing babies to cry it out a few times when they were first born and more often at three months was linked to shorter crying times at 18 months. And the number of times a mom reported leaving babies to cry it out was not associated with infant behavior, development, 
or attachment issues. Over time, parents can often identify a baby's needs by the way he or she is crying. Picking up on any patterns can help them better respond to their baby's cries. The study found two-thirds of the parents instinctively picked up their babies when they were newborns, but as they got older, some parents would wait a bit to see if the babies would calm themselves. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. Interesting topic. I know. 616 and 79 degrees. Officer Nick. Yeah. Sir. No, no, no tears over there with the traffic. No tears over here in the traffic, except unless you're on 90 and 410, because we got a major accident there involving two vehicles. One flipped over there. This is going to be eastbound US Highway 90 West, just past uh, Southwest Loop 410 and just before Military Drive here. So it's right in between there. It's uh, already causing some traffic buildup, as you can see, past the crash. Uh, um, emblem there. It's yellow, so traffic already getting moderate to heavy. Keep that in mind if you are heading 90 eastbound, which usually does get a little uh, jam-packed in the morning anyways. All right, taking a look at the trans guide now. 10 at Bandera looking good. 37 at Houston. Flowing very smoothly. That looks great. Uh, 1604 at Wiseman Boulevard. That's a new one. That's nice to see. That's looking good. And uh, 90 at 36 right now. 90 still looks great. All right. I have to give a quick shout out. Y yes, you do. Yes, yes you do. do. Or you're going to be in big trouble. I know. <laughs> to my wife. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Hi. Bonnie. Yay. Who is beautiful. Well, thank beautiful, you very Mike. much. I pass that along. You're the big, two beautiful people, the Mike. The big 5-0 today. So yes, she her. is. Yes. So anyway. Happy birthday, she's, Bonnie. She's Happy birthday. the new 30 as far as she's concerned. So <laughs> she yeah, looks so. she looks great. Well, yes. Yes, indeed. Does. So thank you for saying that. <laughs> Love you, sweetie. Um, Boy, wait till all the big birthday surprises come. She's watching right now. That kind of sets it up. Anyway, <laughs> uh, beautiful, beautiful sunset yesterday. That was absolutely gorgeous. But uh, it's nice being inside looking at a picture like that because, boy, it's hot out there. And we've got, we had some clear skies earlier. Low clouds are going to be developing as the morning rolls on. And the next couple of days, it's going to be continuing to be hot. Forecasting 102. That's what we hit yesterday, today, as well as through Saturday, 101 on Sunday. Uh, today, the record's really not in jeopardy. But the next couple of days, we are going to be close to uh, either tying or setting new record high temperatures. And it'll be uh, in the neighborhood of it on Sunday as well. And those two records for tomorrow as well as Saturday, they were uh, both set back in 2013. So just about to seven years ago when we had a little hot period there. So yep, just kind of adds insult to injury when you talk about not only is it hot, but then you're talking about record high temperatures as well. Heat index right now, 82 in town, 83 Gonzalez and as far as any clouds today, you know, we've got our morning clouds. Those will be clearing out later on couple of them along the coast. Same thing tomorrow, same thing on Saturday. But the difference being, notice how we start to see a, more of a flow moving in here in the upper levels of the atmosphere from the north. That is, and not to say it's going to be a repeat of last week, but a week ago Monday on the 3rd, when we had some of those showers and thunderstorms, we had a similar situation with the northerly flow in the atmosphere. And you get those little disturbances to just kind of race down here. And that's why we're going to be seeing the chance for some rain on Monday. This uh, is a little bit deceiving. It tends to kind of, as I say, broad brush it in here as far as rain is concerned, but uh, it's just an indication that yes, there is going to be the chance for some rain around the area on Monday. Doesn't mean it's going to be raining constantly, nor everybody gets rain. I don't want to get you, your hopes too high for this, but at least there is the rain chance coming in here on Monday and even going into the middle part of next week. The reason being, this high, which has been plaguing us basically for uh, it seems way too long with all the extremely hot temperatures around here and near record highs the next couple of days, is finally going to start to work its way further off to the west, sort of easing the grip. And then we get these little waves coming on in here. That's going to be the case into Monday. And so again, that's why around that clockwise flow, we have that rain chance. And then by the middle of the week, that high really starts to weaken and we actually it's, it's going to kind of allow disturbances to come in here. A little low may try and develop to the east of us. Not the perfect spot for this thing. You want to be on, have it on the other side of us when it comes to a low, but at least that's going to be around enough to hopefully get things going by the middle of the week as well. So the best takeaway from all this is at least the weather pattern is going to be changing. Not soon enough, though. 92 at noon today. 
102 for a high temperature, and we do have the heat advisory in effect, goes into effect, pardon me, at 1 o'clock through 7 o'clock tomorrow. Weather service is just covering the next couple of days, and I wouldn't be surprised if another heat advisory would be issued for Saturday as well. This covers the northeastern third of our viewing area. Again, 102s the next few days, 101 on Sunday, and then showers, a couple of thunderstorms possible, about a 30% chance of rain, I think, on Monday and even the middle of next week. Whew, that heat index, I mean, it, it feels every bit of 108, 109, 110 out there in the, the peak of the heat. And it got to emphasize, that's in the shade, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. in, outside in the direct sun and walking across the parking lot. It's, it's hotter than that. You got to take it easy. Stay hydrated. Mm -hmm. Right now, 621, 79 degrees. The World Health Organization is now recommending that we delay non-essential dentist visits until the COVID-19 pandemic eases. Find out more in today's GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a free iced coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. It's starting to happen every day. People are surprising themselves. The moment they realize they can do more with less asthma. Thanks to Dupixent, the add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma. Dupixent isn't for sudden breathing problems. It can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and help prevent severe asthma attacks. It's not a steroid, but can help reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Dupixent can cause serious allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Get help right away if you have rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection. And don't change or stop your asthma treatments, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Do more with less asthma. Talk to your doctor today about Dupixent. If your financial situation has changed, we may be able to help. In this morning's GMA First Look, a new warning about visiting the dentist during the pandemic. Dentists have been experts in infection control for over 20 years due to the HIV AIDS scare back in the 80s. So we're used to preparing our offices for infection disease control. Now taking on the World Health Organization over its new recommendation that people put off routine checkups until more is known about COVID-19 and how it could spread during procedures. The American Dental Association firing back, saying it strongly disagrees and that with appropriate PPE, patients and professionals can safely operate. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you what the experts say and what you need to know to keep your teeth healthy and to stay safe. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Reeve, ABC News, New York. A potential major move by Uber and Lyft. Both say they might stop operating in the state of California if they're forced to make drivers, quote unquote, employees. Currently, drivers are independent contractors. Both plan to appeal a judge's ruling ordering the change, which Uber and Lyft say they cannot afford. Facebook is rolling out a new notification screen that's meant to give users more context about virus related links before they share them. It also directs people to an information center that contains credible data from health authorities. This is the new XP1 from Hyperion Motors. It's powered by hydrogen and can reach over 220 miles per hour. The company says it can travel a thousand miles before refueling. Right now, it's only a prototype, but it's expected to go in production sometime in 2022. Officer Nixon Lee says, don't even think about it. Don't think about it. <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> All right, it's 627 and 79 degrees. Well, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris had their first joint appearance as candidates on the Democratic ticket. We'll hear what they had to say about their platform and running against the President of the United States. It's a big day for the Spurs who need to win today's game and then get some help. We will break down what the playoff picture looks like going into the final game of the regular season. And outside with Trans Sky, the sun is trying to come up on this Thursday morning. It will. We're going to do it together. More smiles ahead here on GMSA. A knock on the door brings trouble for a man here on the northeast side. Police say he was shot by the unwelcome visitors. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. 
Joe Biden and California Senator Kamala Harris appearing for the first time together as running mates. I'm Inez de la in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. And a pattern of dangerous heat has settled in across South Texas. Mike will tell you how hot it's going to be and already seeing temperatures, of course, in the mid to upper 70s out there. Good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is August 13th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. It is brutal outside. Heat advisory today, and you think that's going to be extended, right, Mike? Well, it is. Uh, it goes through the, the current heat advisory goes through tomorrow evening. Unlike yesterday, it was one to seven. Today is one till seven, but seven o'clock tomorrow. And it, yeah, my guess would be I, I wouldn't imagine why they wouldn't have another heat advisory even Saturday because we're going to have very similar temperatures right now. Uh, the heat index is 82 degrees, 83 in Gonzales, and you can add probably about 25 in some cases almost uh, 30 degrees to some of these numbers. We're going to be looking at 105 to 110 uh, temperatures later on today. We hit 102 yesterday and that's going to be pretty common number around the area and even looking at uh, uh, some well 105s, 104s around here and just enough humidity left over in the afternoon again to put those heat index readings way up there. Low amounts of allergens from uh, mold, fall elm, across the board and the heat advisory same uh, counties affected today as uh, what was yesterday the northeastern third of our viewing area uh, san antonio up 35 atascosa county off to the east from there again those heat index readings at one point yesterday we hit 102 that was our high temperature and we had enough uh, moisture left over enough humidity to where the heat index at the airport was about 108 yesterday CPS Energy asks that you cut back on energy usage between 3 and 7 during the peak demand days of the day. So the heat advisory 102 again today and then this weekend we're going to continue to see triple digit readings 102 tomorrow as well as Saturday 101 Sunday. Then after that we start to see the weather, pat weather pattern break down a little bit and change and we are going to have some encouraging rain chances to start off next week. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Officer Nick Solis and well, yeah, that says it all. Yeah, eastbound 90, Mike, right now. If you're heading down eastbound 90, expect a little bit of delay. Right now, we were at moderate uh, traffic. Now, it actually looks like it's flowing smoothly again. However, just watch out for this accident. It's eastbound U.S. Highway 90 West at Southwest Loop 410 or just uh, east of Southwest Loop 410 between military there. Um, this accident is a two-car accident. Hopefully, they get it cleared out of the roadway very soon. Right now, all around the city, though, looks good. 90 in Medeo Creek there. 90 is looking good. And those are the eastbound lanes, so it doesn't seem that accident like that accident is stalling that traffic very much. 10 at Hebner, that looks great. That's flowing very smoothly there. And 10 at Crossroads looks great. All right, everyone, remember, go to that speed limit, wear your seatbelt, and get to work safely. Mark? Thank you, Nick. Back to, to a developing story we've been following all morning long here on KSAT. Police investigating a shooting in the 13,900 block of Via Camino. That's on the northeast side near Judson and Lookout Roads. Katrina Weber is live. Katrina, what's the latest? Well, the latest word we had from police is that they still are looking for the people who were behind the shooting. It happened at this house right here behind me. Uh, a knock on the door is what uh, the man who lives here said that he heard, followed by some gunshots. He found his 22-year-old son who had been shot. Let me give you a look at the video from earlier this morning. This happened just before 4 o'clock this morning. Again, a man who lives in the house says that he heard a knock on the door. His 22-year-old son then said he was going to go outside for a moment. He says within seconds of his son going outside, he heard multiple gunshots, then saw his son who told him he had been shot. Police say that 22-year-old suffered a gunshot wound to his arm and foot. He was taken to a hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. But police say that that young man was not cooperating with them, so they don't have a description of the shooters involved. However, they do believe there were two to three people who came to this house very early this morning, apparently looking for trouble. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. About a week and a half ago, everything changed for the owner of popular wing restaurant Wayne's Wings. He was robbed at gunpoint. He spoke to KSAT 12 about the experience and how it's affecting him today. Yeah, it has a great uh, uh, tour. You know, I'm having flashbacks from it. Um, you know, it, it really has me afraid. It's the thing I love the most in my life. It's my business. 
Okay, I'm almost afraid to go there because of what happened. I guess it's, 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 it's you know, it's just life lesson, you know? You just can't trust anybody and, uh, you know, I just have to watch my back at all times and, you know, these are the times we're living in today, you know? It's, it's sad, it's sad, it hurts. I thank God that I'm just here and, I just want to be known as a good person, just somebody that people can look up to. You know, it makes me even want to start doing so much more for everybody, the community, you know, and I'm all about doing things right. So it means a lot to me. Let's, let's do the right thing right now. Well, as of right now, that suspect remains on the loose. If you have any information about this case, you can text SAPD or text a tip to 847411. 637 with a little more than two months until Election Day. The campaign trail is heating up. Joe Biden formally introduced his running mate, Senator Kamala Harris, yesterday in their first event together. ABC's Inez de la Quatera has more. Senator Kamala Harris officially joining the Democratic ticket and jumping right in. The case against Donald Trump and Mike Pence is open and shut. Former Vice President Joe Biden and the California senator appearing for their first time together as running mates, blasting President Trump's handling of the COVID-19 pandemic and current economic crisis. This is what happens when we elect a guy who just isn't up for the job. Our country ends up in tatters. Harris becoming the first black woman and first Asian American woman on the ticket of a major political party. You ready to go to work? Oh my God, I'm so ready to go to work. And that history making pick boosting fundraising. The pair helping raise $26 million in 24 hours. President Trump taking notice and hitting right back during an interview with Sinclair Broadcasting. She is a disaster. She's going to be a disaster, I think, for their party. But the Trump team is also sending mixed signals, calling the former prosecutor both too soft on crime and too tough. I don't want someone who says that... Out of the playoffs, the Silver and Black play the Utah Jazz in the final game of the 2020 regular season this evening. It'll be the second time the two teams face off against each other since the restart. Spurs won the first game about a week ago, 119-111. The Jazz have already clinched the sixth seed in the Western Conference, so we will see if they rest their starters for tonight's game. Tip-off scheduled for 5.30 p.m. So... Here's how the Spurs can make the playoffs. First, they need to win tonight against the Jazz. They'll need some additional help 
from the Portland Trailblazers, the Phoenix Suns, and the Memphis Grizzlies. If all three teams lose, the Spurs clinch the eighth seed. If two of the three teams lose, the Spurs will be the ninth seed. But we'll, we will be able to have a one game winner take all against the eighth seed to see who makes the playoffs. Suns play the Mavs at three today, as well as the Bucks and Grizzlies, and the Trailblazers play the Nets at eight tonight. You can follow all the latest updates on KSAT.com by following KSAT 12 Sports on social media. So all three teams, what if all three teams win? That means, or? That's not good. And, no, okay. Not okay. good, we're out, I think, yeah. Uh, 641, 79 degrees. Well, the time we are productive varies depending on who we are and what our sleep schedule looks like. After the break, we will see how your circadian rhythm affects your work tasks, like sending emails and taking phone calls. Everyone has a circadian rhythm that gives off a certain amount of energy throughout the day. And whether you're an early bird like we are, night owls, or somewhere in between, scientists have found the best times to do certain office tasks based off our productivity cycles. Max Massey shares how to set yourself up for success. Rise and shine. More like rise and send. The best time to send an email is early in the morning. Receivers are 45% more likely to respond since it is at the top of their list. If you don't want to wake up that early, you can schedule it to send at a later time. When you arrive at work, start with the toughest task while your attention is still sharp. Stressful situations like making a judgment call early on will allow your cortisol levels to balance out. While you still have everyone's attention, hold a presentation and be sure to share the most essential information within the first 10 minutes. After that, 80% of the audience has already checked out. When the afternoon hits, breeze through the simple tasks as you're not as motivated with a full stomach from lunch. If you're going to have a meeting, do so at a particular time, like 3.20. That way, it grabs attention and keeps colleagues curious. Since attention levels start to decrease after lunch, aim to set morning interviews. Researchers find people tend to give their most honest responses in the morning, calling it the morning morality effect. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Right now, 646, and it's time to check in with a morning, afternoon, and evening person, and that would be Officer Nick Salee. <laughs> He's an all-day person, always in a good mood. Yeah, great way to put it. All right, guess what? The accident on 9410 is cleared up, so that's good news for everybody there. If you're headed eastbound 90, expect no delay. Things are flowing smoothly. Now, let's take a look at some drive times. If you're 10 eastbound, I-10 eastbound, from uh, FM 46 to 1604, 37 minutes, which is really good. And if you're I-10 eastbound from the northwest side at 1604 to 35, 13 minutes, also great times there. All right, taking a look at the trans guide now. 410 at Bandera, look at that, looking really great. That's uh, looking good there. 37 at Houston, same downtown, looks good right now, flowing smoothly. And we'll do one more here, 1604 and Wiseman near Alamo Ranch flowing smooth. Sounds good. Thank you, Nick. The KSAT Connect picture is going to remind a lot of folks of the very first Star Wars movie, yeah. Mike Ostrich. <laughs> I know. Luke Skywalker's we, home planet. Exactly what I thought. Did, yeah. I did I get that right? You did. There's just, there's vegetation in this one. He was Tatooine? Tatooine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, um, where was the, uh, Moss Eisley. I don't what? know. What was, the, what was the planet that um, uh, Princess Leia? Alderaan. 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 That's mm -hmm. it. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, yep. I get my Star Wars great. But anyway, whatever the, the whatever the planet is, just wow, it is beautiful out there. Thank you very much for the uh, the KSAC Connect picture. Uh, we do have kind of that little bit of morning haze over there, but I was looking outside out the back door, and there's not a whole lot, at least from our vantage point here in downtown, a whole lot of clouds, and we may see a couple of them forming up in the next hour or so, as we usually have, but uh, boy, there's just going to be nothing but blazing sunshine then once we get into the afternoon. Right now, 79 in town, 75 Port SA, and dew point temperatures. We're down a degree from yesterday. Doesn't sound like a lot, but yeah, it just seems like that little bit helps out somewhat, but still have a ton of humidity at Randolph. Same thing at Lotus with those dew points at 75, 74 up there, New Braunfels, Canyon Lake. Um, satellite picture, we, I don't even think, had any showers popping up around here. Yes, nothing showed up in the past 12 hours on the uh, satellite loop. And just the overall picture, again, you sort of, you know, a lot of times you can step back and see maybe, you know, a big feature on the map that looks like it's going to bring about a change. There's a huge low spinning across Canada up there, but that's not going to do anything for us. Maybe two months down the road, but nothing in the uh, the short term. High pressure is keeping everything 
parked up there way up to the north. It's dominating us, sitting on top of us, and that's one of the reasons why we have all the uh, extreme heat around here. 102 yesterday, same thing today, tomorrow, Saturday. 101 going for on Sunday. However, by Sunday, notice how, and even a little bit on Saturday, the high moves off to the west more. We get into more of a northerly flow, and we get some of these little, just little glitches moving down through here, and more pronounced glitch in the atmosphere, if you will, is going to give us a bit of a chance for some rain. I'm going for about a 30% chance of rain on Monday, and then even into the middle part of next week, as the high continues to stay out there to the west and weaken somewhat, that is going to allow still the chance for some rain. This low wants to try and develop here to the east of us, which is not the perfect spot to have a low develop. You want to be on the have it on the other side of you to get uh, more lift in the atmosphere. But at least with that high weakening, we are going to start to ease up with the, the whole weather pattern. So we're going to get out of this this heat, this extreme heat, and at least have some rain chances by next week. 92 today at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature today, 102. It is going to be brutal out there. Heat advisory for the northeastern third of our viewing area, and that goes till 7 o'clock tomorrow. I want to emphasize that it's all the way through today and basically all the way through tomorrow evening through dinner time tomorrow, and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Saturday we might have another heat advisory posted. Triple digits through the weekend, and there's that rain chance on Monday. And I'm putting about a 30%. Maybe I'm being a little optimistic, but at least we got the rain chance and then middle of next week as well. Mike, we've been attending your class for years now, and if I recall one of your lectures recently, you were talking about this is typically statistically speaking hottest time of the year, right? Through Sunday. Through the Sunday. The 7th through the 16th, normal high 97, normal low 75. So there's and, that. Yeah, just get and, through Sunday. And then by the end of the month, though, two weeks after that, normal high temperatures down to 94. So it's one of those where it's a, it, you know, slope going up and it drops off fairly quickly about mm -hmm. three degrees every couple of weeks as far as the normal high temperature 94 we, never sounded so good no kidding right we just wanted to make sure you knew we were actually paying attention in class thank you that's just the 30-year average though okay doesn't mean temperatures necessarily good and then you factor in leap year and remember the hottest temperature mark sat in the front the row in school i did obviously. back row <laughs> asleep 651 not your class Sorry, doctor. 651, 79 degrees. Obesity is an epidemic in this country and in San Antonio, and it disproportionately affects children. Join us tomorrow on GMSA, where we look at ways to make sure your child maintains a healthy weight. Outside with Lycan. Think about that, though. I mean, it's got a nice ring to it. Dr. Michael Osterhage. Office hours very, very early. Doctor of what? <laughs> Life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Life. We'll knowledge. be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Today, students at Shirt Cibolo Universal City ISD will start school remotely. Students in the district will continue virtual instruction until September 8th at the earliest. More school districts will start the school year on Monday, such as SAISD, Southside ISD, Alamo Heights ISD, and Northeast Side ISD. To see when your child is expected to start school and to see remote learning guidelines, just head to our website, kset.com, and our back to school page. Coming up today on GMSA 9, climate change is a hot button topic. It is. This week's episode of KSAT Explains is all about the facts and science of climate change. Our very own meteorologists Katie Blake and Sarah Spivey join us to break down the episode at 9 after Good Morning America. Right now it's a little less than five minutes till seven, and here is Nick Solis. Ah, thanks, Mark. All right, yeah, things are looking good all around the city right now. Ten at Wurzbach, look at that. Looks very uh, smooth access road and main lanes. 1604 in Bandera as well. Both those east and westbound lanes looking great. And 410 at Jackson Keller going towards the airport looks amazing. Mike? Thanks, sir. Sun's not up quite yet, although uh, skies are beginning to lighten up, obviously. 81 is the heat index here in town right now. 84 Gonzalez. 102 for high temperature today. And at that point, we are going to have those heat index readings way up there. So heat advisory today, 1 o'clock this afternoon, up until 7 o'clock tomorrow night. So it's going to go that whole stretch, and we're going to stay in the low hundreds through the weekend. And we're still looking at some rain chances maybe by Monday. It's Monday. It's Monday. Yes, I was going to say it's Monday. <laughs> it's a good mix. Yeah, we will. It's, the heat. it's marvelous. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll be back here for GMSA at 9.